Howdy, it is I, Junk, back to talk a little bit more about The Pursuer because there's a thread on the forum where uh, Basic Breakfast um, pointed out essentially that I'm terrible at playing Pursuer, which he's not wrong. Uh, you know, it's not, as you, as you probably know, it doesn't accrue to my particular strengths. It's not a tanky bot, it's not a brawler, it's not uh, an overloaded behemoth, so stealth, speed... These are not things, I guess stealth is not really the pursuer, but these are, these are not things that I'm particularly talented at in this game overall. But he particularly had some thoughts about the build, said, why aren't you using your best skilled deaf survivor? And I, I hadn't thought about it. I mean, I know it's a game changer on the camping little baby bots, the, the weather chicken, Siren or Harpy, but I guess it would be on pursuer too. So I, I tried a couple different builds with this, recently. Well, I guess first, let, let's get into the pilot skills, right? So, I took off the cudgels because I didn't want to spend the skill on shot grouping. And I was looking at at basic breakfast build and my build. The big difference, the big differences that are still there are he's got invulnerable raider and I still have dodger because I still think I want the modules to recharge faster. What I've changed since last time is I took out Master Gunsmith to add Ninja, which is from his build. Increased movement speed after capturing a beacon. And uh, I dropped the shock grouping to get Death Survivor. And I dropped... This is not from his build, but I dropped Modules Expert to get Wonder Worker. He has, he has Quartermaster, which I, I'm okay on Power Cells at the moment. Wonder Worker is because, also in his build, he uses a jump unit. So, <laughs> of course he does. It's, it's basic breakfast, and jumping is kind of his whole deal. That's a little reductive, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a very distinctive element of his gameplay, because he, he plays... Basic breakfast plays the game in three dimensions, when a lot of us play the game in, like, two most of the time and even then it's like even with flying robots like you're playing in a two-dimensional plane on the ground and then you're playing in a two-dimensional plane in the air that is not how basic breakfast plays this game he's playing this game absolutely in three dimensions and he will be shooting directly from a from directly below you or directly above you at any given time i am not going to be able to do that because i am not as skilled as he is but i'm hoping to add a, a, a dash of basic breakfast to my game i'm never going to be basic breakfast but i might be like a, like a remedial brunch you know like a a slightly complicated but not that complicated brunch so why why blight well i knew i wanted to take off the cudgels because i wanted to get i wanted to, to have the the pilot skill without using shot grouping and i don't find them very effective without shot grouping so that also eliminates sonics because you need the shot grouping for that too so what's left well before i had switched anglers to my um which um, this angry yeah, to the puncher shredder angler so i took the the claws off of this and put them on the pursuer and i had a showdown where i was facing a uh a seraph and it just didn't it didn't do enough damage like the debuffs were great and would have been really useful if there had been anybody else shooting at it but there wasn't so okay i need a weapon that doesn't require a shock grouping skill that does enough damage that isn't <laughs> isn't going to be you know like what what what's left i've got in, there's i, I could put flames on it i thought about that and that that might be very effective but i thought you know really with the jumping skill the dk gives me more options at how i want to play so we'll see how that goes I played three games before. One of them was a hacker with a new thing. I got totally blinded during that game. I'll have to, like, cut that out and upload it, even though I'm talking over it, mostly about how much I hate Pixonic, which is perfect, because then I can send it to them and they can watch it. Not about how I hate Pixonic. I, I had just praised, I just said that I hadn't seen hackers all day. And sure enough, when you know who won the pony... And one of the things I said in comments recently, I was talking about. I was talking about the the creator program, and I mean I don't like to dwell on it because, 
well, that ain't a pleasant memory for one thing, but mostly because I, I don't necessarily care deeply. I was pretty ambivalent up front. But the thing that Pixonic likes is when people express love for the game like it's a second date, and I've got love for the game like we've been married seven years, where I have a lot of complaints, I have a lot of problems, I'm still with it. <laughs> you know, and it, and the the difference is that's... That's a more durable love. It's it's not as it's not as sunshine and roses and and happiness, but it's uh it's it's recognition of all the complications and the flaws and still finding good and joy in it. So I think when you understand and, and I I think I'm speaking for other people in the forum too, and you know, since I know we're talking about people in the forum, let let me know if I'm if I'm wrong in this, but I'm not saying it's the same as being married, but I'm saying it's that it's that kind of a, a relationship to the game where you do really love something about it. And eventually, that still might drive you away, but the kind of affection you have for, for war robots is just different than the kind of affection that gets expressed in most of the main channels for it. And it's really only, like, recently now you're sort of... You're, you're seeing those creators just making entire videos calling out Pixonic. That wasn't really a thing six months ago. And like, if, three or four months ago, I know Manny did one that was just very... It was almost, like, deferential. Like, can you please stop kicking us in the teeth? What, Like, we, we just want to love you. What, what, why do you make it so hard? But now, like, AD Gaming and Predator have made videos where they're just like, well, here's what's wrong with the game, and if you don't fix it, it's, it's going to die. And that was unthinkable. That was unthinkable half a year ago, and now... It's kind of mainstream thought. And the thing of it is, all the problems they're talking about were here half a year ago. So, <laughs> that's the... <laughs> maybe that, that's, that's the difference is that, you know, if, if, you're, if you're too honest too soon. Anyway, let's, let's actually do this because I know I'm going to get demolished in this thing no, no matter what I try. So let's hurry up and die. I was also saying before that it's very unnatural for me when I hit the battle button to not start recording because I'm so used to that. So now when I'm already recording and I hit the battle button, I, I feel incomplete. Like I feel the anxiety of, oh, you, you have to start recording. I don't know if that's ever going to go away. I changed, um, you, you're not going to get game sounds. I changed the mic setup again because I just felt like the voice was really mushy in places. And there was a problem with, I thought we were, I thought it was recording two, two separate channels. It actually added the voice to the game channel too. So I had voice in two channels. And I don't think it was necessarily unlistenable the way it was, but it definitely changed the voice quality and added to that kind of mushiness. So I'm still working that solution out. Oh, I forgot to talk about the drone. There's on module use damage chips in there because of the because of the uh, the jump unit. So I really want to capture beacon so I get my ninja speed boost going. Ugh, great. Let's see if this weather chicken wants to meet me on his beacon or he's going to teleport home. That was the smart move. Bad for me, but it's the smart decision. Oh, boy. Well, BB said to play aggressive, and I'm playing aggressive. Suicidally aggressive, even, uh, you, you could say. Still hasn't figured out I'm over here. Oh, apparently I forgot to turn off notifications. Fantastic. This is a high-quality operation I got going here, everybody. Probably should not be so close for this particular fight. Whoa! <laughs> Where do you come from? <laughs> uh, seven seconds on my ability. This is getting messy. All right, let's do this.
Oh, I don't want to be part of this scene anymore. I mean, double kill and three caps is better than I've done so far in this robot, so... Okay, you know. And it looks like the game... It's not like the game has been easy, so... Uh, Alright, maybe there's something to this. Let's Let's not dismiss the pursuer just yet. That was... For a first drop, that's about what you could expect for, you know, most first drops. I don't think that was particularly bad performance. Was I aggressive enough? I don't know. And were those the right weapons? I felt like I had a lot more options with the decay. I felt like I had more ways of making my opponents miserable. So, I think this build is better so far. Of course, I might have gotten lucky, but I'll take luck every so often. Come on, just just do your phase thing and let us have the beacon. Just just get out of here. Get out of here. You don't want to be on this beacon. So you're not going to phase, but you're not going to stand on the beacon. Okay. It's a bold move, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off for him. And then you face to stand on the beacon. That's, uh... Okay, I guess. Whatever. Makes my life easier. And what was the Seraph doing? It wasn't taking the beacon? You guys know this is Beacon Rush, right? Am I in the right mode? Like, are these beacons just accidentally spawned in here and, and this is Team Deathmatch? Or is, is there some reason why you would just stand and shoot and not take the beacon? Because I'm not sure I understand your your, your whole situation here. I say that, you know, honestly, I have, <laughs> here's the thing, I say that, but I've had games where I'm like, why did somebody do X, Y, or Z, and then they were recording it too, and I watch it from their perspective, I'm like, oh, obviously, that makes a lot more sense, so I'm sure he had his reasons, that's, you know, Apex is not Scrubs, so, my, uh, I need to have more faith in their, in their decision making, and not be so critical, I'm sure it was the right move, based on the information they had. Oh, that's interesting. Vajra Heimdall. You know, there, it's interesting. There are people who really love Heimdall. Heimdall's like a divisive titan in the sense of like the assessment of its abilities seems vastly divergent depending on who you ask. I've got people in, in, in Next who absolutely love it and swear by it. And I've got people who view it as like less than the Minos. And the Minos is barely a titan on the best of days. Sorry to any Minos fans out there, but I'm sure, like, having said that now, someone probably, it's probably Basic Breakfast is going to come back and like, nope, this is how you play the Minos, and it's going to turn out to be really good, but I just feel like there's no situation I've been in w where if I had a choice between a Minos and a Luchador, I wouldn't take the Luchador. I'm not saying the Luchador wins every matchup, but I'm saying it's hard to envision a situation where I wouldn't rather have the durability and the great damage protection versus the shield and the speed. The, the only one that comes to mind is beacon running, and if, and if this is about beacon running, why are you doing it in a titan to begin with? It's like, that's just a weird way to use your titan. This guy has a nice Fenrir, uh, and I guess Exodus... Uh, what is it, Exodus... Oh, Ember? I guess Ember's the medium... No, is Ember the larger than... I can't remember. I can't remember what the medium flamethrower is, but whatever it is, he's doing an interesting job with it. Uh, normally, I would... I would drop right now to get into my Titan, but I want to give him a chance to kill me. Oh, well. So that actually was kind of interesting. It's going to take a lot more... I mean, those six beacons, three of them were, were the Pursuer. And we just beat a partial squad. Hmm, well, they were sort of down one, it looks like, almost... Do I tempt fate and play one more, or just take this win and go with it? I'll, I'll tempt fate. You know, I played two to trash the pursuer. <laughs> I didn't trash it, but to say it wasn't necessarily a great meta robot. Uh, I'll play two to redeem it, even though the odds of not hitting a hacker or just getting blown up in two seconds seem very low. But I'm I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you, BB. I'm doing this to 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 vindicate that you are the master of the pursuer. And you could coach even a scrub like me into being 
pursuer capable. I didn't. Ex I didn't exactly know when Death Survivor triggered because I think, I honestly think my my ability was available at the time. I was. I forget. What, I was trying to do something. I was trying to like wait for some event to happen before I hit it. So, I don't know that I got the benefit of it. Oh, it's our friends again from the last game who, I'm sure, are in no way salty, that, a pursuer was instrumental in their defeat. I don't want to stand out there on B and get shot at if I can get to C. But I'm going to get a Revenant teleporting here any second because that's a meta robot and why would you not run it if you had it? What is this? Mm, bye. Oh, I don't really want to be in this matchup. This is not the matchup I was hoping for. We did get him to turn around, though, so that's not nothing. Just pulls him away from City for a minute. It gives us something to work with. Alright, and we can run through. Oh, we could if we weren't gravity amped. See, I don't like that. How am I still gravity amped? Ugh. How many gravity amps do they have running at once? Well, that... I guess my ability was already triggered, so that was obviously less successful. Probably didn't help that they just watched me run that exact same robot on them, though, so it's a little hard to... A little hard to say that, like, the Pursuer wouldn't have been more successful if they didn't know I was going to drop a Pursuer. I mean, a lot of this game is, is rock, paper, scissors, knowing the, the bots to drop. So when you play two in a row against the same people, it helps to not drop the exact same robots. But I did not know it was them. Mmm, that went badly. Yeah, I think they're feeling some kind of way, and they're going to make us pay for this. I don't want to teleport over there because I'm not sure where I'll land. I don't know if I'll land on the beacon or not. I'm just going to make him sit here with me. So how are you? This is an awkward first date through a wall. Oh, they, they've got a they've got one of the annoying weather chickens there. I have to say, I have a name I call those things that is less friendly than that, but I kind of can't say it and stay monetized. So, FYI. <laughs> There's an even less kind name than weather chicken, but I can't say it right now. Yeah, no, this is going to be a great meta. This is a totally reasonable way to design a robot that isn't terrible and stupid at all. Oh, great. I'm an Oreo. Okay. Let's try something different, I guess. I don't really want to stand there and be shot from range by a Typhon, so I'm just going to do this first. Okay, now you. It's your turn. Don't fly. Just, oh, come on. It, w it is nice when they just pop like that, like a pinata. Now we got this guy. Enjoy shooting at nothing, friend. Hmm. More friends over here. And this guy. I really don't want to be standing in front of punchers like this, but... Alright, not optimal, but necessary. I, if I hadn't done that, I would have just eaten the punchers to the face, and that's not really better. Alright. I think... Was that a, f a flaming leech? Because that's pretty cool. I like that leech energy. Another one of these dang things. 
I would be happier in a world where we didn't have so many Indras. I'll just go ahead and say that. What now? Yeah, you should definitely stand directly on top of me. That's a great plan. That is not at all the worst place to stand. Uh, I don't like being off the beacon, but... You kind of got to deal with this guy. He'll just shoot you from over here and take you out. That was not the way to play that. Spoiler alert. What the what? A different uh, mirror mitts? I, th I saw he was. There was one that blew up. I guess the second guy comes out now. He's got a friend or something. What is this? A Mars? Yeah, you should probably should piece out of that. I swear, I thought, I thought one of these mir mirror mitts blew up. I I don't know what I was thinking or seeing. I thought they just. I don't know what happened. Some some happened. Alright. Let's see if I can get away from this turret. This is a tough squad, but it seems like our squad is pretty tough too. Let's see if we can do something about this. Nip this in the bud. Okay. And if I can live long enough... No, I can't. That's okay, because... I have a couple robots left, and they're both a lot of fun. Mmm, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's the move. Okay. What do we have? Angler? I wonder if these guys had, had their, like, one of their randos drop, too. Again, this game, because it seemed, seemed like... Oh, wow. It's official. I hate your clan now. <laughs> I've never seen... Three camper... Cheese bots... Take off like that... At the same time. And I don't even slightly feel bad for them now. Anybody with that many weather chickens in their hangar deserves to be fried chicken. So, still slightly better than the first game. We had... No, everybody played. Well, so we, we had one and one. Uh, I, I mean, in terms, of, in terms of pursuer performance. We had one where the pursuer was... Three beacons and two kills for a first drop robot is very solid. And then one where I got a cap, tried for a second, and it didn't exactly work out. But I would say, yeah, this is a more successful build. I could see this being a lot of fun. In kind of the, the same way. Like, I, so I, I used to run a Jumping Orochi, and I think it was a lot of fun in that way, too. Like, the Jumping Orochi was great with, you know, before they nerfed the speed, too. Because you could really, you could cross from the ramp. Like, on, on Springfield, the, the ramp to Beacon to to Beacon C, you could jump to the dam. If you, if you hit your speed and your jump at the right time. So, yeah, that's Pursuer. Uh, that's Basic Breakfast's... A suggestion on a much improved build. I'll link in the description. I'll link to his to, to the forum post where he's got his full build on there, and he can answer questions about it. Uh, so I will thank him for the education. I'm going to thank you for if you've gotten this far and you've watched this whole thing. And if you are a dog or cat left home alone with YouTube on just to make noise, you're a very good puppy and kitty, and I'm sure your owners are going to bring you a toy real soon. Later.